family, the most important institution, the foundation where indeed the whole of life begins, the foundation from which we're all pushed out into the world to discover and become who we're made to be, that we're all pushed out into the world as well to also impact our world. So it means that our families, the way that they are nurtured, the way that they are formed is very important. We all know that families these days, and always, even from the very first family, have had their challenges, their issues, their trials. You are welcome to another episode of Chapters, and today we are talking about that very important institution of family. Indeed, we thought to begin where it all begins. I'm very excited for who I'll be speaking on this very important conversation with. And first, I will introduce the book for discussion today. It is called For the Love of Family, written by Mrs. Abimbola Shomulu. She's a family life advocate. She's a lawyer. She's a writer. She's an educator. And she's also the founder of Bimbo Family Affairs. You are most welcome to Chapters, Ma. Thank you very much. You look so beautiful. Radiant. <laughs> <laughs> How have you. you been, Ma? I've been good. I've been very well. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you as well for writing this book. And so I started to read it. And, you know, like I was showing you, it became like a textbook, literally. Wow. And I was very excited because many times we find books on men, books on women, books on children. But I like the fact that you were holistic. Mm. And even in the several about 26 or 27 chapters, you took it from marriage, husband and wife, boys, children, complete book on family. So mm. I said we must have this conversation because if we get family rights... We will get the world right, mm -hmm. I truly believe. But let's start from the very beginning. How did this book come about? Mm, thank you very much for that. So, my mom passed in 2015. And um, after she passed, I just thought, no, how can she just come and go like that? Mm. Um, I come from a background where a uh, beautiful family, lovely father, f lovely mother, but between both of them, it was a bit um, turbulent in our home. And in the midst of it all, my mom just stood the ground and made sure that though there was turbulence in her life and my, husband, my father's life, he, she just found a way to keep the family, the foundation going. Mm. And it made us, uh, us the siblings, um, very, very close. Uh, it made us um, kind of grow under a turbulent environment, but made us strong. Mm. So when she passed on, I just thought to myself, wow, can she just come and go? And something just came up to me and said, start to write, start to blog. So this is a compilation of my writings over the years, because mm. this was released in 2020, actually. So I was blogging. Do I like to write? No. But I just started writing in sequences and um, it became a book so it's from um i would say from my pain mm. brought this gain i love it mm. i love that from your pain brought this gain yes. that is powerful mm. and every pain has purpose yes which is what i think you've done with this book indeed and let's start from the very beginning your chapter one you said in the beginning family and I love the fact that the quote here is written by your husband. Yes. If I'm <laughs> yes it so it's is. a family book. And he says, if one can feed and ensure that the moral and value composition of a family unit is sustained, it can be assured that there will be a ripple effect that will make the society better. For you coming out of a home where, like you said, your father and your mother had their challenges, and that's a story of most homes. What do you think your mother did that helps to still maintain that solid unit? Because it's important because men who come out from those homes and are broken mm. and then only replicate what happened between their fathers and their mothers, which they didn't like, mm. which you also talks about in a chapter in this book, in their own marriages and to their own children. So what do you think that your mother and even maybe your father did as well that still helped to help you come out like that, that you can, after many years, write a book like this? The values. Hmm. There was love in our home. Though there was turbulence, but there was love, deep love. And the love came from my dad and it came from my mom. Do you understand? So those values, those, that love, that um, being there, being present, and doing what it is that fathers, father and mother would do, support system, 
school, school fees, clothing, travel, everything was there. Like I said, it was just between both of them. But it, we didn't lose the fact that we had a dad, we had a mom. And my mom, my dad was in the army. He was a general in the army. So he was a soldier, but my mom was the warrior. Hmm. So that combination made us continue to be focused. And the fact that in the, even in the midst of both of them being a loggerhead, they never said anything negative ab about each other to us. That is it. That is it. And that is beautiful. And I think that's a lesson many parents need to learn. Things can be happening between you because mm -hmm. as well, and maybe we should just segue into marriage. You know, you have a chapter on marriage here. Let me just open to that page 24. Two different people with two different backgrounds, yeah. two different experiences come together. I said two imperfect people trying mm -hmm. to make things work. Yes. There is no way there would not be friction. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about marriage. And you've been married for many years. 25. 25. Ah, where do ma? Yes. You look Thank amazing. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow, that's a whole half of a golden jubilee mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. So 25 years experience. Yes. You saw your parents' marriage. How do you think when two people come together, how can they make marriage work? Now, um... The interesting thing, and I must confess to you, though I'm a counsellor, I don't counsel on marriage. Because in my own journey, I'm still experiencing a lot. And so I don't talk too much about marriage. If you realize, it's about family. Yes. Because if you think beyond me and you, the larger picture, okay, the, the children, the parents, the grandparents, then you will not be selfish on mm. me and you. It's my mm. way or your way. So for me, it's more about going out of my selfish nature mm. as a man or as a woman to think more about my children, the name, the grandchildren, the, 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 the parents. So how it can work for you might not be how it will work for me. So I'm not in, the, in that position to be able to say this or that. But for me, I will talk about my own experience. Yes. So I'm coming from a top line background. I'm a, I meet a very handsome young man in school, in university. And we, we hit it off, do you understand me? But even during our courtship, we had a very, we had, I mean, he's like my dad, I'm like my mom, also in that marriage. <laughs> do you understand? And you're coming, whether we like it or not, our background, mm. you know, affects us. Yes. But it doesn't determine our future. But it does have a lot to do with where we're coming. What where, where, where we're coming from has a lot to do with where, 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 what, 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 what we're going what to, to do. do. Yes, so, but you have to be conscious about not taking the wrong steps. Mm. So it, when you're conscious of that, but most of us are not conscious of that. We believe boy and girl meets each other and everything will go on mm. well. Happily ever after. Happy, happily ever after. So even in my courtship with my husband, with my husband now, we had a lot of fights and things like that. You understand? He, he, he say yes, I say no. He says two, I say three. I had not my mouth. My mouth was my weapon. Hmm. Do you understand me? So there was a, a situation in my home when we got married that happened that my mother-in-law, we had this quarrel, my husband and I, and my mother-in-law spoke to me. She's from Sierra Leone, so she's not the typical Nigerian mother. And she said, look, Bimbo, because your father and mother had um, um, an imbalanced relationship, marriage, doesn't mean you would have it. Mm -hmm. So get yourself out of there and focus on yours. And when she said that, I didn't realize that because I was living the way they were, because he says one, I say two. So I came to realize that. So there was a quarrel that we had one day and he walked out and he, and he said, I can't remember what he said. And I said, you know what? Go east, go north, go south go west. You come back, you meet me here. That was when I knew that I've been liberated because mm. if I just go on and let's quarrel and he gets angry and he says, I'm going back to my parents' houses and da 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 it won't work. But I just realized that, hey man, we're here for each other till life, till death do us part. So I worked on it's myself beautiful. and I noticed that most times we, we focus on the man. Mm. We focus on it has to change. Something, I mean, he has, why can't he change? Why can't he be like that? But guess what? The change I want in him starts with me. Yes. So I had to start to realize that, that 
I need to change. I need to work on myself. I need to know who I am, find my identity, then he will compliment me. As opposed to, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I think that's why most of us lose it. Mm. So my own journey is different. I schooled myself. I learned from experience. Some of us, when we're coming from a perfect relation background, we think nothing would happen. But that helped me in my own journey. And guess what? I have three girls. So I knew that I cannot, because the, what the father does in the lives of uh, girls is awesome. So I had to have that cover for my girls. So those I thought beyond me, mm. myself, I was thinking about the future. That is so powerful and so beautiful. And you said here, like every living thing, marriage, you need sewing, watering, pruning, tending, and patience. And you did put, I mean, you even wrote in this chapter an example as well of yourself and your husband. So thank you for sharing that. Our journeys are different, but sometimes, you know, just listening to you, we always have to look inward. It's easy to blame the other person on the outside mm. and all of that. But let's then talk about pain mm. in families. Um, that is, that cannot be, it's always a painful thing because we expect that, ah, it's my family now. Mm. <laughs> we have this mindset that nothing should happen. You touched on pain in a chapter and then you touched on forgiveness um, in another chapter mm. as well. And I just want to turn that, yes, you said, why do we hurt those, those we love? We love? Yes. That's on page 46. Yeah. You said, love your family, spend time, be kind, serve one another, make no room for regrets. Tomorrow is not promised and today is short. Mm. How do we handle pain, especially when it comes from those that are closest to us? It's tough. Pain hurts most from the people that are close to us. Infidelity mm. from the husband, from the wife, it hurts deep. Um, T.D. Jake says, family is the gymnasium of life. You mm. go to the gym, you sweat it out. Mm. You sweat it out. <laughs> you sweat it out. And every pain that you receive from the family hurts deep. But you have to learn to forgive. It's not automatic to forgive. It's not. It takes grace. Look at what happened from the beginning. Cain and Abel, brother to brother. Do you understand? Mm. It's, it's deep. Best family. So it's, it's very deep, but it's real. It happens. Yes. Infidelity, like I said, um, people that um, um, take advantage of their children, have incest with their children. How do you forgive your dad doing that? Do you understand? But, w you know, what we can do is to find that peace. And it's only God. You know, when you're in pain, how? How, how, do, can, you, how can you get out of it? It's mm. only God. It's only being able to say, this is happening to me. Most of us, mm. we, we, we cower into our own um, pain. Mm. But if we can read, that's what the many counselors now. Mm. You have to be able to reach out to somebody that is neutral and speak to them about the pain that you're going through, what your dad did to you, what your mom did to you, what your husband did to you. But in this culture, you're very careful what you say or how you say it. But the easier, you know, half of your problem is solved when you speak but where do you sow that seed? Hmm. You have to find the right person that to say, I'm in trouble. I'm tired. I'm fearful. This is what my father did to me. How do I get out of it? But if you don't speak about it, you can't release yourself from it. So may we have people around or the support system that will speak, that will be there to say, what's wrong? Hmm. I see pain. We must find where, places where we can just uncover let go. Let go and let God. Tough, difficult, doable. And I'll just quickly go into forgiveness before we go on the break. I know that these are deep things. I wasn't trying they to start deep. this deep, but um, it is deep. You know, it's real. It's real. You talked about forgiveness and you mentioned when you lost your mom. And in the book, you did say it was even when you lost your mom, you then realized how much bitterness you had towards your dad. Yes. You didn't realize you were even carrying the pain she had yes. for him. Yes. And you had to walk through that to say, yes. what's going on here? Yes. And, you know, you said here, mm. because forgiveness is, you know, it's, it, it's easy to say forgive. forgive. <laughs> <laughs> but life is, uh, life is very, is very deep, mm. you know. And you said, yeah, we must not let bitterness keep us from our destiny. Mm. Close the door to negativity. Mm. Allow it to bounce off you. Mm. If you focus on it, it will poison your mind. It takes a mature person to let go and shaking and shake off negativity how did it work for you in because especially when it comes to 
children and their fathers and even their mothers, yeah. that pain is deep. Yes, it is. Now, this is part of how it worked for me. The book. That's an outlet. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's an outlet. Because at times when I talk about my mom, I'm even happy that today I'm not in tears. Mm. When I talk about my, my mom passed 2015. When I do talk about her, I'm in tears. That means there's still pain in me. But I got to a place that there were not, I didn't even realize that until one of my sisters said, you know, even when you talk about her, you know, do you understand me? So this is the part of the process. Me dealing with some things and just doing things. When I released this book, the topic, I, I did, a, like, uh, it was last year. And I, I sent this book to my dad. You know, he wasn't aware, but he read it. And I said, Daddy, I'm going to um, do, uh, what's it called, a launch of my book. And it's going to be titled um, Conversations with My Dad. And he came from Abuja. I felt so elated when he came. That was part of the release. Mm, Do you absolutely. understand me? So we have, I have four siblings. They have different ways of dealing with this. This was how I dealt with my own. And the way I'm dealing with it, and I've dealt with it, is the fact that I went through this journey. I went through this purpose. I was angry. I was frustrated. There was a day I even asked my dad, did you hate my mom? Mm. Do you understand me? Because they brought us to be fearless. I'm very bold. I speak out the way I am. I want to. So this is my journey. This is my uh, process. This is part of my healing. Do you understand me? So you have to find what makes it work for you. We all have to have an outlet. This is my own outlet. This is my healing process. This is the way I found my own journey, my own coming out and talking about it. Because many people say, oh, you brought your family out. Hey, mm. How do we learn? You know, I'm not, I don't, I mean, the way I am is that, how do you help? It's not just pastors that will help. I am the church. I, my body, my, 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 me, my life. I listen, I'm, I'm 50. My life redates what God has done in my life. Mm. And this is part of the journey. Do you understand? This that we're doing now is part, of, it's part of the journey. Because if you didn't read this, yes. you yes. Won't, we won't be talking. And it's a liberation for people to hear. Because when we did this launch, people were crying. Mm. People were talking about the experiences they've had. Because it's a topic you don't want to talk about. Exactly. My family name is there. My children's names are there and everything. But what are those names for? The names that God has given to us so that we can use those names to make it real to people that these things are real. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, when I read the book, I said she must have really gotten to a place of freedom because, like you said... Thank you. That's the word. Everything is here. That's the word. And it's amazing because now my dad, you know, he's getting older. Mm. He calls every day, checks on us. It's becoming frail. But we're there for him. So the pain has gone. Amen. And God has released. And may he release everybody out there. Amen. Wow, we have to go on a short break now. This is, I feel, just so much beauty. And I also believe that anyone watching this, if you're going through anything with your family or just inside of you, there's turmoil and there are just all sorts of confusions. This will bring healing and freedom like it has done for Mrs. Chiamuli. But we'll go on a short break now and we will be right back. You're welcome back to Chapters. And I must say that the atmosphere right now is just one of peace and one of calm. And I hope that you watching it at home or anywhere that you're watching it from is also feeling this peace and calm as well. We are talking about family, the important institution of family. And before we went on the break, Mrs. Shomolu took us on a journey of forgiveness and finding freedom and healing, which is very important for each and every one of us. Thank you so much for that, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. And right now, I want us to go into talking about children. Mm. Mm. You talked about that a lot mm. in this book in different ways. And I was just excited reading the different chapters and how you brought things out. I think I will start from, yes, chapter eight for our children. Mm. You have three children. And one of the things uh, that he talks about is don't parent your children the way you were parented. Please share what you mean by that. Now, the world has changed so drastically. When we were growing up, when your mother winks, <laughs> she doesn't need to say anything. You understand it. 
when you go to somebody's house and they ask you, do you want to eat? I mean, there's some basic things that we knew. Mm. We were not taught. Mm. But now, <laughs> you have to teach. What, what are we doing? What, what do people have parenting courses now? My parents ne never had parenting courses and things like that. Do you understand? So the, the world has changed. Now, your child asks you questions. If you can't answer, it's better for you to say you can't answer because if you can answer, Google would answer. Mm. Do you understand me? So it's not a, a period where you would say, um, I don't, I mean, don't ask me that question or because I say this. Because they're going to challenge you. We've given our children a voice to be able to express themselves, to be able to ask questions. They, they, can, they can see the world on their phone. Do you understand? But in our own time, it was different. You are, you are seen and not heard. Mm. Do you understand me? You, you, there's community. So your mother is my mother. If I do something wrong, um, your mother will scold me. Yes. And she doesn't have to tell my mother. But now, if your daughter does something and I say something, you will tell me my, my business. <laughs> Do you understand me? So it, a lot has changed now. Mm. So parents need to be parented. Mm, yes, there's a chapter on that. Yes. Now, because we've lost our values. You know, we, the, the money aspect has thrown us off balance. So the focus is more, I have it. I have this. I have that. So why should you talk to me? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? So, the, so that is what I mean by where we're coming from is different from where we are. We are. It, 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 it's absolutely different mm. the way the way we were brought up, and also talking about parents spending time mm. with their children, actually mm. building, like you said, values. Mm. So you said here that you watched a video clip that triggered something in you. Um, people were asked, parents were interviewed separately from children, and asked, "Who would you like to spend your time with?" All of the parents named different celebrities. Yes. All of the children said their parents. Yes. What's going on? A lot is going on. You know, from zero to 12 is when you parent your child. You spend mm. time with your child. 12 to 19 mm. is when you balance it as, um, uh, let's have a, um, um, a discussion. Let's mm. talk about things. Because you are building on the zero to 12. You must be a parent from zero to 12. You, mm. It must be your way. But 12 to 19, you need to compromise, to, to s relate and everything. 19 upwards, you have to be a role model. Mm. So those are the, wow, wow. the times that, you know, parents now, we, we give, we provide, but we don't spend time. We don't support um, the way we, are. We, we need to support. We provide everything, beautiful schools, lovely toys and everything, but that connection is, is, is not there. So these children spend time with celebrities, friends, and watching this and watching cartoon and everything. But they need that me time with their parents. So that's what is happening there. But the parents also, remember, like I said, in those days, maybe a father is working, the mother is not working, so you try to spend time. Mm. But now, guess what? One salary does it's not, not help. It's not helping. So we have to be realistic. I, mother goes out, father goes out. The children at home, the nanny who can probably speak English, who is not emotionally stable, who comes from a background, whatever. Those are the people that children are spending time with. So, which nanny will come and say, stop watching that because the nanny wants to watch. Mm. The nanny is coming from a, a, an unprivileged um, environment. Your child is doing this and that. Your, the nanny wants to do that. So, these children, whether we like it or not, they're craving for attention. You know, in as much as a child is um, going the wrong way, the child is actually speaking a language. Mm. I need you. If the child is bullying yes. somebody, yes. it's like, I'm bullying because I need attention. So there's some kind of inadequacy there that we don't feel up. We think we're feeling up because the child has a beautiful room, has all the gadgets in the world. They've been taken to school in a car and everything. But who is my child? Mm. What's my child's love language? Some children, they just want you to be there. I just want to cuddle you. So leave me. Hey, boy, stop being moody. Mm. Do you understand? I'll give you another example. When a child, when you tell a child, don't do that, don't do that, and a child does it, and the child maybe falls down, the child comes. It's a reflex. When a child it, it, it falls or does something wrong, the child comes to you and cries towards you. But at that moment, that's where you say, but I told you not to do that. And you mm. push that child away. That's not the right time. Mm. You cuddle the child and say, but I told you not to do it. Mm, and you did it, true. but you need to say next time, mm. whatever, whatever, whatever. Because it's natural for the child to come towards you when he does something wrong. It's natural. 
but something push that pushes that child back because my mom's word or my my mom's eyes or what my mom would do mm. those are the things that pull them away from us and it becomes a cycle mm. as they're growing up mm. as they're becoming and the teenage years are the most difficult mm. no matter how, how loving your child is at zero to twelve when they become teenagers, they're neither here nor there. They don't know if they're children they're or they're adults. Themselves. They're finding their identity. Body's changing. The man, the, 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 the private part of the boy is standing in the morning. He doesn't know what is happening. Do you understand? So many things happen. The, child, the girl is moody. She mm. doesn't know because of her period. But you're saying, why are you moody? What's mm. wrong with you? Are you the only one? Da, 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 da. We're so judgmental. Those are the things that resonate in the children's lives. So when we get into those adolescence years, they start to remember. Because when you're a child, cover. Everything covers. You know, you play with your friends and everything. Mm. But when we're becoming an, ad an adolescent, okay. and you become, you're growing and understanding yourself and trying to say, then you start being moody. You start remembering what your dad said. Then you start to see your friends doing this mm. and doing that. Then you start to change. And un unfortunately, those formative years, you've lost it with your child because your child will not come to you. The child wow. will listen to the other children. Listen to what they, if you say, don't wear this. Mommy, when your friends say, even if you tell your child, this is not nice. Your child doesn't listen. Do you understand? But when they, the friend says, this is not nice, they listen. The child will listen. But if you make your child be confident, be bold, be assertive, you know, be sure of themselves and affirm them. You know, I'm very proud of you. I know that you didn't make the first, but you made second. Or even you made 30. But you know what? You're going to get better. So the affirmation, and guess what? Adults, many adults, don't have that also. Yes. They're deprived of that. So many adults are still craving for that exactly. acceptance for their parents. So they don't even have to give it to the no, children. they don't. It's tough. Family, it's tough. Everything you see opening every day is from here. So what do we do? So, I mean, listening to you, I was going to ask you, how have you done it? <laughs> Did you know this before your three daughters? And I know, I mean, there was a story you put in the book about one, one of your daughters said, Mommy, I want to talk to you. And, you know, you were going to answer and she said, it's private. Immediately you jumped up. Where are Problem in the land. Yes. <laughs> And she actually told you how I think a teenage boy or something had wanted to be. And when I read that, I said to myself, for a child to trust you enough mm. to tell you that, mm. you've created a very special environment of trust, of openness, mm. of talking. Mm. Because those are deep issues. So mm. how have you done it? Well, I'll tell you how I've done it. And it's nothing, um, let me just say, my, my mom was very strict. As strict as she, she was, the first kiss I had was from a relative. Hmm. As strict as my mom, as wow. padded as my house was, it was from a relative at age seven or nine or something. I went to the toilet. I didn't lock the door. And he came to meet me and he started kissing me. And guess what? I was, I was like that. I remember one day I was sleeping on the bed and he came to my room and he was on top of me and um, grouching or whatever it is. Do you understand me? So, you don't do anything. You don't say anything. We were, not, we were not taught to talk. So what I just thought of was that if my mom was so strict and everything, and that, and that happened, happened, then there's fire on the mountain. Hmm. So it's not that there's any particular way of doing or whatever, but you have to be sensitive to these things. I see things. I, I ran a school for 15 years. I see things. I know the children are not happy. I know the children are being deprived. In the, I can see it. I, I'm intuitive. Genocide. But it doesn't mean that I will know everything. Yes. It doesn't mean that everything in my own home is perfect. But we must not go to sleep as parents. We must just be very intuitive. Continue to pray to, to be, as, you know, to be intuitive, to, to listen. Even if they say something, even if you take it with a pinch of salt, investigate that thing. So how did I do it? Grace. How did I do it? Intuition. How did I do it? I talked to my children about, not even my children, and that's another thing, my nieces, my nephews. I talked mm. to them about drugs, I talked about boys, mm. about girls, about sex. Whether they listen or not, I say it. Because once you hear that, you know, when we're growing up, when you go, many of these children, went, when of our contemporaries went abroad, but what they always remembered was, Roti, Enti, Want the the of who whom you are. Yeah, remember, like those are the things. It doesn't mean that they did not do uh, mm. James Bond. 
Mm. But some of them just continue to remember. Those are the things when you know that, you know, even with this suicide that is happening every day, you know, some children, they want to commit suicide, but when they remember that my mom, mm. my dad, do you understand me? But if they know that my mom doesn't really care, my dad doesn't really care, it's the easiest way for them to just Very give up true. because this generation, <laughs> they, they give up easily. Because guess what? It's fast track. You want to send them, in those days we used to write letters. So you take your time to write. You want to toast a girl. You are scared and everything. But now, everything is easy. It's fast. Mm. So if you don't, if you don't get um, anything right now and then, you just give up. You just say, what's happening? Am I, and, and what's wrong with me? My friends are doing this. My friends are doing that and everything. Do you understand me? So I just continue to talk. I continue to express my views. I continue to, I'm very intuitive. If I have to call my children, <laughs> And I'm sleeping. <laughs> I call them. A lot of happenings happen in homes. Yes. Neighbors come. Yes. Uncles, <laughs> aunties, fathers. Mm. Jonathan, these things are real. But some of us are not. We don't pay attention. We think it's not real. It is real. It is. Do I have all the answers? No. Am I on my journey? Yes, I am. Thank you for sharing, Ma. Mm. You are a mother of three girls. Yes. But you wrote a book, you wrote a chapter. You wrote two chapters, actually. One on men, one on boys. Oh, and I was very happy. Because there's a lot of attention on the girl child, the girl child, the girl child. Yes. There is like little to no, it's trying to grow now on the boy child. Mm. Because many times, a lot of these things, the girls can be trained to be careful to be this, be that. The boys are the ones, you know, and you said it here, it is much easier to mold a boy child than to rehabilitate a grown man. Please talk about the importance of this boy child. You know, I have three girls, like I said, and they're going to marry someday. Absolutely. And they're going to marry men mm. after God's heart. Amen. You know, and so men need women. Women need men. men. Boys need girls. Girls need boys. We, we cannot be isolated. We're, we're brought, we, we, God has designed us in different ways. And we have to understand that as, as human beings, that a man's responsibility is different from a woman's responsibility. A man's identity is different from a woman's identity. But when you're married, you're going to have your self-identity and your joint identity. So if we start to realize that, we'll not know that. And because of the broken homes, mm. that's what happened to boys. Women are the ones bringing up boys, mostly. And we, we, we are in, inadequate to bring up boys, absolutely. Yes, some people are doing fantastic jobs, but most people are not. A father's role in the t life of a child a father, like I said, the temperature, the voice of a father hmm. is like a thermostat in the home. Hmm. You know, our children are very, you know, we get, they get away with murder with us because we're emotional beings. Men are pragmatic. Exactly. They're pragmatic. When a man says no, it's no. But we women will bend. No, they're called law. Let him go. Let her go. No, 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 no. So a man's voice does a lot. A man being the man in the home does a lot in that home. Be responsible to your children. Be responsible, even if you have children outside the wedlock. Be responsible to your children. The boys, the boys are lacking in many things. Yes, ma'am. They're not, you know, when younger days, the girls used to look for sugar daddy and things like that. Now, boys are looking for where they'll put their head and say, oh, you do everything. Do you understand me? So there has to be a balance. A man must know how to sew. He has to know how to cook. Don't worry. A woman, a man that does not know how to do basic things, is going to be a liability in the mm. house. So a lot of things men have to do. So when we identify that, it's not about me. It's about that joint responsibility, that teamwork. Then it will be easier. So men see a woman leading and you feel aggravated? No. Give her the support so that you can lead together. Mm. Do you understand me? But men are running organizations and doing a perfect job. But they're not running their homes well. Mm. They're not fighting for their homes. They feel it's a woman's responsibility to fight for the home. No. Pray, be a priest, be a leader, be a teacher to your child. And women also, we must not stand in the way of our, the father and the child. We must not use our children as pawns. Against, exactly. No, we can't. And many women do that. So a child hates his father, not because he wants to hate him, but the what the mother has pumped into the heart of the child. So all these things are very important that we need to, we need, you know, it's bigger than us. Yes, it is. So boys... <laughs> 
there's too many things. There's Women's Day, International Women's Day, <laughs> National Women's Day, but only one Father's Day. Why? Why one Father's Day? Would you understand me? So fathers should take responsibility. They should take the lead. They should spend time with their children. The other day, I went to uh, St. Jude's Church to talk about fathers, and th some people say, uh, I bought, uh, my, my family is traveling for, to Europe, all over the world. They're going for the summer. And guess what? The father is not going. Most mm. Nigerians do that. They will talk about what they're doing, but they're not going. So you are spending the money, you're not spending the time. How do you know your child? You said it here. You said they're absentee men, and all they do is provide. Provide. They don't connect. They don't connect. So many things. When you see a boy saying he's tired, he doesn't want to be part of his father's life, there's a friction between the father and the boy. I'm telling you. Because the father wants the boy to live under his shadow. But they must step on into their father's footsteps, mm. not live under their shadow. These young children, these young adults, rather, they are fast. Yes. They, are, they, 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 they can do anything. So allow them to be, but support them. So I think that chapter is let them fly. Let them fly. <laughs> Let and them fly. He gave you an example how your father wanted you to be a science student. Oh, yeah. And you went to school and by five, by oh, course, you did your social... <laughs> no, not that science. No, that's, a... <laughs> that's a joke. Wanted you to study science. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he said, I should do this, I should do that. But I'm happy I studied law because I was confused. I didn't know what I wanted to study. So I put there, if they don't know, if they know, support, support them. them. If they don't know, and guide, guide them. them. If, they do, if, um, if they're not sure, guide them. If they don't know, Push. Because mm. some children have to be pushed. Some children just it. want to be sitting down there. I they have it. to be pushed. Do you understand me? So those are the things. But how do you know if you don't understand your child? So know your child. That's it. It's a, it's a journey. It is. And it's a project. Mm. Your it's child a is a project. Oh, no, it's a project. I love that word. It's, it's a, a project. project. It's a project. I love that word. We need to go on a short break now. Please. And when we come back, we'll continue this project because <laughs> even this in itself is a project yes. that will help your project every one of us we're either part of a family building a family come from a family so this is a conversation for each and every one of us we will be right back You are welcome back to Chapters, and today has been a powerful, powerful conversation on family. How to make family work, spouses, children. Mrs. Shimonlu has been, you know, the first part she was gentle and calm. By the second part, she was beating us. <laughs> Literally. Amazing, ma'am. I want to talk about your Chapter 3, yeah. and I really like this because it talks about differences. Okay. We might all come from the same family, but we are all different people. Oh, yes. And sometimes is that not understanding how our differences actually make us one. Mm. You titled it, Identify Your Role and okay. Play Your, your part. part. You know, each mm. person plays different roles. The mother and the father play different roles. The children as well are different mm. because sometimes you have three children and one is quiet, one is this. You want everybody to be like who you might call, quote unquote, the best child. Mm. Talk about differences and how our differences actually are the things that unite us. Okay. Um, like you rightly said, I mean, we all come from the same root, but we, have co we branch into different um, branches. So our children um, are a part of a man and a woman. And there's some things they will take from their father the, and the, the, some things they will take from their mother. But in that, that community of parents, um, of a family, they're, each one of them has come with something that God has given to them. Mm. Do you understand? And we have to be able to identify it to be able to affect the, for, uh, affect the good of the family. And I'll give you an example. In my home, there's a mediator. There's a person that calms us down. Do you understand me? And she's just natural with that. Mm. Okay? One of them also is somebody that um, she's quiet watch the strength hmm. in the family. We identify that. So we know that even in the midst of the chaos, she will survive. Do you understand me? So those ones, you can tell them to go anywhere in the world. Okay? And the third one is quiet, right? But angelic. Doesn't say much, but once she says, you need to listen. So 
Each one has something they're bringing onto the table. And even in, disco even in discovering our children in my own home, the, the, the interesting thing is that either we don't know which one out of all of them will, will, be able to, will be able to know that will be even the one that will take us to another level as a family. So I always tell parents, don't focus on a child. Mm. Life happens. Wow. That child that you are thinking that is going to take care of you oh. when is this or what other that. Mm -mm. It's only God that knows. Life happens. So we must not show preference, uh, preference to a particular child. Do you understand me? So every child has come with something. Identifying that, that thing is what we might not know, mm. but we might have time to identify it. And it, it so happens that there's so many things that children come with that even us parents, we will reap from that. Yes. So, but we have to be able to listen. Let your children talk. Listen to them. Let them communicate. It does, I'm not saying spoil your child, but let them communicate with you. Listen to what they have to say. Somebody, I know a pastor where it was his children's ideas that made him change the trajectory of his, of his, of his uh, church. Of his church. Hmm. It was his children's ideas that, why don't you try this? Do you understand me? So if we're sending our children to good schools, expensive schools, why don't we think that they have the ability and the capaci capability so to, to, to advise us? And we must also remember that the, the male child must respect the female child. Yes. You know, in the home, whether it's older or younger. Because I see homes, the male child will be sitting down. Is the ch um, female child logging it out in the kitchen. Hmm. Entitlement mentality. Which Do you understand me? About. Oh, no, no, no. It, 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 it's, it's warped. It's not. You teach if you're teaching your child how to how to, how to change the tires. You better call your male and female child because they all need these skills. So we go to school. We think because they have a degree, they have it all. No, that's for them to have discipline, to have a, to have um, a dis discipline, and to have um, a routine and structure. But out of when they come out of the school, how are they? Who are they? How do I cope with life? Life. Hmm. Some children can't even cross the streets because they're scared. So life skills are very important. So yes, each child comes with something. Identify that. And if you don't identify it, listen to what the teachers are saying. Listen to what the tutors are saying. The things that they see in your child. Write it down. Mm. Work on it. Mm. Support. Mm. Encourage. Make it happen. Create the right environment for them mm. to be able to soar. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. And there was another thing you wrote yes. that I thought was so profound. Sharing your challenges with your children. <sighs> <laughs> which we don't do. I mean, you gave an example of one time, I mean, maybe you went somewhere, and someone said, where are you going for summer? I said, you're not going anywhere for summer. You told your children that there's no summer this year. You know, and then when you were praying, your youngest daughter then prayed for the dollar to drop. And I'm like, that's how life should be. Please, please, please talk about that. You know, our children look up to us. They don't want to disappoint us, but they cover, they give us what we want to hear. So they make it seem like everything is perfect. Because that's what the world throws at us. That I'm a CEO, so I know all the answers. I'm the manager of the bank. I'm a pastor, so I don't have problems. I don't have challenges. Do you understand me? So that's what they see. But behind the scenes, what happens? They have to see our vulnerability. Hmm. Not our weaknesses, our vulnerability. Okay. Do you understand Not me? We have to share stories. The, the challenges we had, how we solved it, the mistakes we made. We have to. I tell my children the things. When, I, when happen things happen, I tell them. Mm. I tell my children the real things mm. of life. I share with them so that they can understand that I'm not perfect. Mm. I can look the part, but I'm not perfect. Behind the makeup and everything, that's the real me. Mm. Do you understand? When I don't have money, when I'm waiting for this or waiting for that, the, the mistakes my friends have made, I will not give names. I will tell yes. them so that they know that there's struggles in life. There's seasons in life. Do you understand? You have to learn to wait. So everybody sees uh, their parents as made, perfect. See them in the newspaper, see them and everything. So they, they feel inadequate. How can I make up? How can I catch up? No, nobody's saying to catch up. Just identify the things that you are doing and what you're doing, the mistakes you've made, the, the struggles you've had, the, the projects you started that you could not complete, mm. and the traditions, family traditions. Everybody talks about family curses, curses. No. Focus on your family blessings, what you are passing on, what you want to pass on. So share your experiences. Tell them about your struggles. It's very important so that they know that you're real. They hold you. 
Mm. My mommy real? Mm. She's always out there talking and everything. Is mm. she real? Mm. She always looks all perfect. Is she real? My mommy cries. Mm. She had sad moments. She feels weak at times. She struggles at times. Tell them. Because sometimes your parent children are the ones that are going to pray. Pray it out of you. Mommy, don't worry. It's going to be fine. Mm. I've heard my children say, Mommy, don't worry. It's going to be fine. That's all we need. And when you get the accolades from your family, there's nothing like that. You see all these accolades that we get out there, the plaques, the recognition, everything, it means nothing if your children and your family is not around you. It means nothing. Your constituency is your family. Hmm. That's what matters. So when anybody's down, I heard about a story that a father, his child, if I had time, or something happened in, in the States, and he was imprisoned in the States for whatever it is, what reasons, credit card, I don't know. The, child, the father left Nigeria and went to go and stay in the States. Every of the visiting day, he went there to see his child. In Nigeria, it's going to be a taboo. Mm -hmm. But how do you find the support, like the prodigal son? Mm -hmm. Everything was perfect for the prodigal son. Everything was perfect. But he wanted to find his way, his identity, and he went and he spent all the money and finished it and he remembered, my father did not drive me out. This, my home is beautiful. Guess who was waiting for him when he was coming back? His father. His father his open That's eyes. the joy of a father. That father used to go there at every visiting day until that child was released. So it's not just about, just about money, giving my house, giving me a money and everything. It's about the time, the sacrifices. So those things are very important. And you said here, in fact, that literally reminded me of your chapter one. Uh, and you said, no one needs a superman. Mm. We need a human. Yeah. And I thought that was just powerful because yeah. indeed we try to be superhuman yeah. parents. Mm. I can do everything. Okay. I'm here to provide for you. And building them like that also helps them to be prepared for life in itself. Mm. So they themselves grow up with a better understanding. And, and there was a part you said, don't prepare the road for your children. Mm. Prepare your children for the, for the road. Yeah, that's a quote, yeah. Yes, mm. somewhere in the book. Yeah. Wow. We've touched on so many things, mm. but if you had any final words on mm. family, mm. what would it be? It will be <laughs> the first institution created by God is the family. And that's the most important institution. Mm. Make it work. Make your sacrifices. Forgive. Let your legacy be for the love of your family. Thank you. Thank you, Ma, for... <laughs> I'm warm. I'm literally warm just listening to you. This has been so powerful, so amazing, so enlightening, and I just thank you. And indeed, just like she said, let your family work. We've come to the end of today's show, and I'm sure you've taken something from this. You need to share this. People need to watch this. Can I yes, read this as the read final word? Yes. My epilogue reads, when a birth occurs, family members are usually present or are the first to be informed. And when a death occurs, the same thing happens. However, what we need to do during the period between the life and the death of a family member Mm. is to make each day count and create beautiful memories. Take a decision now to rewrite your family story. Thank you. On this note, I'll just say, remember that it is not about what you know, but what you do with what you know. Take everything that has been said today, think about your life, think about your family, apply it, and just like she says, rewrite your story. I thank you for watching, and until the next episode, goodbye and God bless you.